Welcome back to Grow and Preserve. I'm Carter, and today we're gonna to have a great time. We are canning what I think is the second easiest thing to pressure can, and that's chicken. And honestly, it's only second easiest to the beef we did yesterday, because you actually have to cut it up. And with the beef that came prepared for stew, we didn't even have to cut it up. So today we're gonna to do a very easy canning recipe. It's not even a recipe, it's a method here. We're gonna raw pack some chicken. And this is this is a little half pint jar that I did in 2020. And this is a pint jar. Today I'm gonna to do some of both, but I'm gonna do more half pints because I love to just have chicken salad um, every now and then, maybe for lunch. So in fact, last night I had such a craving for chicken salad that I made some for myself for dinner. My husband's out of town and I filmed that for you. So perhaps when the canner is going, I'll slip that in and we'll show you how I use it. At least one of the ways I use it, I use it for everything. I make burritos, enchiladas, tacos, um, barbecue chicken sandwiches, uh, soups and stews and um, like a white, chicken chili oh it's it's all it's delicious you you just you'll love it and there's nothing wrong with canned chicken that you get from the grocery store but i know exactly what's in it i know the quality of the chicken i'm using organic chicken from costco so i know that that's in there i am not going to add any salt uh to mine today now often i do in fact i used to add salt all the time and that's absolutely fine it has nothing to do with preservation just do it to taste uh, if you want, add a quarter of a teaspoon to the half pint and half a teaspoon to the pint. The reason I don't do it anymore is because my animals like the little juice that's made by the chicken as it cooks in the pressure canner. So I don't want to give them all the sodium. So I keep the sodium out and then I season it as we go. So let's get started. I have a couple of pint sized jars. You want to use the wide mouth jars for this, otherwise it'll be very difficult to get the chicken out <laughs> if you have to deal with the shoulders of a regular mouth pint. And then I have some half pint jars. Again, it's just straight up and down, straight up and down, so you won't have any problem getting the chicken out. These are clean. I ran them through the dishwasher last night. They are, they're not hot because we're doing raw pack. My canner, you can see it over here on the stove, it is, I have filled it with water, with cold water. It is not on, it is not hot. We're gonna put cold chicken in a cold jar, in a cold canner with cold water, and we're gonna bring everything up to temperature at the same time. So I'm gonna bring you down here so you can see what I'm doing, and we'll get started. Let's see. Now, I'm sorry for the ugly cutting board today. I did not use my wood cutting board with chicken, so I pull out this old, um, plastic thing just because the thought of having raw chicken on my cutting board just doesn't doesn't sit terribly well with me so here's a jar i'm going to put it off to the side and i have already rinsed my chicken and drained it and i always do a little bit of cleanup on my chicken this is not necessary i'm just a little particular about weird looking pieces in my in my chicken so i don't want to eat that i will cook that later for the animals hear the cat coming down the stairs now. So I'm gonna cut this into about an inch wide and then just as large as the, the breast is across. And here we go, watch this. Easy as it gets. Putting this in the jar, just like that. And we are just going to pack it in here. We don't put any liquid in this. As it cooks, it makes its own liquid. It makes it, it really, it, it comes out as, as chicken broth. I suppose that's what it, exactly what it is. Oops, get it in there. I have clean hands. All right, so that is one large chicken breast and you see we have room for more. So in terms of serving sizes for the pint, that for us, for the two of us, my husband and I is just perfect for a meal. So if I'm making burritos or tacos or whatever, I just open one of these. If I'm making chicken salad for two of us, 
I'll open one of these if I'm making chicken salad for one of us. Or let's say I'm making a vegetable soup and just wanna throw a little bit of chicken in there, I'll open a half pint and that'll be plenty. So this is actually going to be a little less than a pound of chicken. I'm gonna fill it up to one inch below the rim. So here's the rim and this first little ring down here, that is the one inch mark. So I'm gonna fill it up to there. Better to go just shy of that than just over it because our chicken will make plenty of juices. So I'm gonna cut a thinner piece to put in here. There we go, okay. Now, we are right at that one inch. Tap that down a little bit. You can see that there are air pockets in here. These will fill up with the juices as it cooks. Since we're not adding any liquid, there's no need to debubble or anything. It will just fill in the gaps. Okay, let's do a small one. So, same thing. Again, I'm gonna clean this up. You really don't have to do this. You might think I'm crazy for worrying about it, but I just like to, I'm kind of weird about chicken parts. I don't really, I don't like the little tendons and tenderloins, you know, those are supposed to be everybody's favorite. The thought of eating the tendon just, you know, that doesn't do, that doesn't do anything for me. So let's get a couple of these in here. What can I fit in? Slice one of those. Okay. I can fit a little bit more. So if you wanted to add salt, this is when you would add salt. As I mentioned, I am not going to add salt today. I'm gonna get these two finished up and sealed so you can see that, and then I'll get the rest of this done before I come back to you over at the canner. So this is just white vinegar and a clean paper towel. And you see how when the chicken goes in, it could get juice or whatever, Chick chicken goo on the ring here or on the rim of the jar. So we don't want anything that could impede a seal. So I have wiped that. New lids. Always use new lids, especially when pressure canning. I know it's controversial um, in other ways. And quite honestly, I have used it in water bath canning uh, before I have used, used lids back in uh, 2020 when we couldn't get any lids and everything sealed just fine. You know, I was, I was very careful to look at the, at the inside ring here and everything was okay and I didn't have any dents or anything. So it's not recommended, but in a pinch, you do what you have to do. So pressure canning though, I would not, I would not reuse lid. Okay, so we're gonna do this until it catches and then just a smidge more. So here's a pint size. I'm gonna put that on there and then turn it till it catches and then just a smidge more. All right, so I'm gonna get these finished up and then I'll meet you over at the canner. All right, we're back over at the canner now. I was able to fit four pints and two, four, six, eight half pints in the canner. I had 10 pounds, about 10 pounds of chicken so I have another pint and a half left over, and had I not been so weird about cutting out the little pieces, probably would have been another half pint there that uh, I will cook up for the cats. So this is a cold canner. I had two, three inches of water in the canner. This is an all-American canner. It is the small one. It's the 915, I believe is the number. If I can find a link for it in uh, at Amazon or Walmart or something, I will include it down below. I, I love this canner. If I were doing it over again today, I would probably get the 921, which would allow me to stack pints on top of each other. But this is what I have, and I love to can, and it's just fine. It's absolutely fine. They're an investment. This one was 300 and some odd dollars. 
The next one up is 400 and some odd dollars. So I started with a small one and I'm, you know, I'm glad I did. It's easy to manage. These things can get very heavy. So for now, this is what I have and I'm perfectly happy with it. So I have all this chicken in here. Obviously this is cold. I have not started anything. The chicken was cold. The jars are cold. The lids are cold. The water is cold. And you can see that I had, when I put all the jars in, I started with two to three inches of water in here. Put the jars in, the level rows. Nothing is above the level of the jars. And that's just fine. That's the way it should be with pressure canning, unlike water bath canning where you want things to cover the jars. So I'm gonna put this on now. So here goes my lid. This is the weight. I'm gonna take this off for now. We will come back and put this on later. So we live in Tennessee. Now we used to live in Atlanta. Now in Tennessee where we live, we are below a thousand feet above sea level. So I use the 10 pounds of pressure here. In Atlanta, we were above a thousand feet above sea level. So we use the 15 pound weight. So if you're above a thousand feet above sea level, you'll use 15 pounds of pressure. Below a thousand, you'll use 10 pounds of pressure. There is a five on here, but I, I don't know if anybody uses that. Um, anyway, so either 10 or 15, and we'll put it on here when it's time. So I'm gonna get this latched up and then we'll talk about the next steps. So I do the latches opposite each other at the same time. I know this is gonna take quite a while to come up to temperature because we are starting from cold. Everything in here is cold. So I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna break it up to temperature slowly. So I'm gonna do, go with a medium low to start things off and then I'll turn it up a little bit as we go. Want to get to the point, this is the little steam spout where steam is spewing out of this. And when we have steam spewing out of this, we're gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and we're gonna, just gonna let it spew for 10 minutes. And then we'll come back and we'll put the weight on. For me, I'll put it on 10 pounds of pressure and then we'll wait for it to jiggle. So I'll come back when, when we have steam spewing and we'll talk about the next steps. We are back with the chicken. So, I don't know if you can see this on the screen. We've had some, oh, some hot steam, a lot of steam pouring out of the spout. And I set a timer for 10 minutes so that all of the excess steam and water can get out of there. It has just gone off, so it's been 10 minutes. Now we're going to put on the weighted gauge here. As I mentioned earlier, we're gonna do 10 pounds because I'm below 1,000 feet above sea level, you need to use one of these because the steam is very hot. So I'm gonna put it on just like that. <laughs> so now what's gonna happen, if you can see the gauge over here, this is gonna come up to 10 or 11, which tells me that we're at 240 degrees inside, which is exactly what we need to be to kill anything that could be in there, any type of botulism, anything. It's all dead at 240 degrees. I have pints and half pints in here. So we're going to cook this for, or can this for an hour and 15 minutes, 75 minutes. If I were doing it in quarts, it would be an hour and a half. So an hour and 15 minutes. We're gonna wait till this thing starts jiggling. And I'll stand here with you for a minute while we wait for this to jiggle. And then we're gonna get it to the point where it jiggles two to 10 times uh, a minute and and that's it, we're gonna leave it for an hour and 15 minutes. And then when my timer goes off at an hour and 15 minutes, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna turn off the burner and I'm not gonna to touch anything else. Everything else is just gonna stay there. It's gonna come down gradually in pressure until there's no pressure or very little pressure left in there. And then once it's set, it's probably gonna take 30 to 40 minutes. I'll come in and we'll remove the weight. And we'll let a little bit of steam that's left in there come out and then we'll leave them for about five minutes and then we'll take out the chicken and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. So we'll give this just a second. To start the jiggling. So this will jiggle. You know, people get scared at this point when it jiggles and there's just no reason. There's nothing that can happen here. Everything is, is bolted down with all these bolts. You see, it looks like 
some kind of spaceship uh, thing. It's not going anywhere. Nothing's going to explode. They can't explode. These are all, they're all on properly. There's just nothing to worry about. It is intimidating in the beginning. I'll, I'll tell you that, it is. But do it two or three times, piece of cake, piece of cake. And then you're gonna use this chicken for everything. You're gonna put it in burritos. You're gonna put it in enchiladas and tacos, in taco salad. You're gonna make a barbecue chicken pizza. You're gonna do barbecue chicken sandwiches. You're gonna do chicken white chili and chicken stew and chicken noodle soup and chicken and rice soup and everything. You know, you'll make, I'm gonna show you when we leave this, I'm gonna put on the clip from last night and I'll show you the chicken salad I made. It is my favorite. It is absolutely my favorite. <laughs> I tried not to put the whole uh, bowl of it into my bowl, the whole mixing bowl into my bowl uh, because I was on camera last night. But I have to tell you, I came back and I ate the whole thing uh, and it was delicious. I, I'm glad I did. I, there's no way I could have put a, a quarter of it back in the refrigerator and let it stay there. So, all right, we're getting up there. Start to hear a little bit of fizzle over here. This is on seven and a half or so, eight, climbing to eight. So it's about 230 degrees in there right now. You know, we're below at 212, 212 degrees. That's 100 Celsius and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So in order to get it up to the 240 degrees, we need to kill botulism. It has to be under pressure. And that's why we do meats and other low acid things. And then we don't add vinegar to, add lime juice to, anything that's not naturally acidic, um, it has to go in the pressure counter. So that's what we do. And we are almost there. Have you seen the video I did before this? Uh, the easiest thing to can, easiest thing to pressure can, it, it's beef. I've used the beef for stew from Costco and it is so ridiculously easy to do. And another winner versatile ingredient that you should have in your pantry. So this one is number two because we actually had to wash off the chicken. We had to cut it up. And you see, I, you know, I had to cut off the little bits and bobs that make me probably weird. And, but this, this is number, I mean, you saw how easy this was. And the beef is even easier because you don't do anything but take it out and put it in put it in the jar. So here we go. We're starting to get some jiggling. I'm going to let this get started and then I'm going to take my temperature down a little bit to make sure I'm not over jiggling. There we go. That's what you want. I'm going to take my temperature down. You'll get used to the right temperature for maintaining pressure on your stove top. For me, I, I, I go down to low, and that'll keep my jiggles about right. And so we'll just listen to the jiggler for a second. You want two to 10 jiggles per minute. So I've turned it down. There's a jiggle. You can see we're over 240 degrees. That's another jiggle. Gonna come down a bit. I don't want it to jiggle the whole time like that. We'll have four breaks. Okay. Here we go. So we'll count that as one. There's two, and we had a nice little break in between. So I'm gonna call that good to go. I'm over 240 degrees, but not too high. My temp is down where I know it needs to be. So I'm gonna let this go for an hour and 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna turn the heat off, and we're gonna let everything come back down, let all the pressure release naturally, and then I'll bring it back and we'll open it up together. So thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed the clip of my uh, dinner last night. I hope you like and subscribe, and I hope I'm gonna get to see you very often. So thank you again so much. Well, hey, this is the night before Carter. 
you're in the middle of watching a canning chicken video and I just wanted to show you what I had tonight, last night, uh, for dinner. I am craving some canned chicken, which is what we're making today. So I'm going to show you how I make chicken salad with this. There are so many things you can make with this. I do burritos and tacos and barbecue chicken pizzas. I put it in soups and salads and casseroles. Um, there just really isn't much you can't do with canned chicken. Even, even if you're buying canned chicken just from the store, there are tons of things you can do with it. So don't hesitate to keep that in your pantry. So I'm going to open this. It's a regular can opener and I use this little piece uh, just to pop the lid. There you go. That's the sound you want to hear. Now that everything is just safe inside. I'm going to drain off the liquid. I have to use the liquid on dinner for my animals. They just love it. So this is what it looks like. Kind of like it does when you open a regular can, right? So I'm going to bring you down. I don't use um, celery, which is often used in chicken salad, but if you want that, feel free to use that. So I'm going to Get all the chicken out of here. I may not eat all of this tonight, but, but we'll see. I reserve the right to eat all of this if I want to. Okay, so shredded chicken. Can you see? That's how this comes out of the can, or out of the jar. And it is, it's, it's just shredded chicken. Okay, so we're gonna take that. I have some mayo. I like this one, but of course use whatever you prefer. I'm gonna put the mayo in. Just a, well, I don't know if that's a little bit or not, but we'll see. Mix that around. All right, I may put a little bit more. So you see on my board here, I have some onion. This is homegrown onion I just chopped. I'm gonna put that in there. A little bit more. I have some pecans, some chopped pecans. It's delicious in there. I love those. And then I'm going to put some apple and then some dried cranberries. Put all of that mixed together. Whoops, made a mess. That is not the first time, and it won't be the last. I'm going to need a little bit more mayonnaise in this one. Let's put a little more mayonnaise in there. Okay, we'll do a taste test. And then we'll serve it up. Mm. I think I want some more cranberries in there. And I'm gonna finish the apples, put those in there as well. Okay, here's my serving bowl. this up. I'm really starving today after a full day of canning. Okay, I don't know that I can eat all of that. A few nuts on the top. And then I'm going to put a cracker. We tried these from Trader Joe's. I think they're really good. So I'm going to break that up. And there is my dinner. Very filling. That is probably, I didn't eat quite all of the chicken, but maybe five ounces of chicken, which is absolutely plenty. Um, so no vegetables tonight, but you know, don't tell anyone. 
So let's have a taste. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. Let me see if I can bring it back up. Oh, sorry about that. Mm. That is really delicious. So I'm gonna send you back to the video where we made the canned chicken. Make this, definitely make this, even if you just use canned chicken from the grocery store. It is so good. So have a good time, bye. Okay, welcome back. The chicken is done, it's ready to come out. I turned the canner off after an hour and 15 minutes and then just didn't touch anything. So the pressure came all the way back down. So now it's time to take off the weight and to remove the lid slowly, and then we'll bring out the chicken and see how it looks. It's gonna be great. Let's get this off first. I don't know if you can hear that, there's just a little bit of pressure left in there. That was it. Leave that off. No pressure left now. There's no air coming out of the back. So let's get this undone. You enjoyed my dinner that I made for you last night, that I made for me that you got to watch. It was so good. So make that, even if it's just from store-bought pan chicken. I hope you'll try this, but try that chicken salad recipe. It's delicious. Okay, give this just a second. Let it come down just a little bit more in there. We don't want any jars to siphon, to crack, to come down too soon. This should be just fine. Ooh, I can smell the chicken. It smells delicious. Okay. It all looks great. I'm gonna bring it all out. These are my jar grippers. I will link these down below. They come in a kit. Fantastic. I don't know what I'd do without these, quite frankly. Okay, remember raw chicken went in, there was no liquid in there, and look at all the juice that the chicken made. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So if you're gonna make soup or stew or butter chicken or whatever, that's just essentially chicken broth. And if you're gonna make chicken salad and you don't need the broth, you have animals, they will love it. There's another one. Okay. This is what a little half pint looks like. It's a perfect size for one or two if it's going in a stew or a chili. Quite a few of these. Can you see that they're still bubbling? Can you see that? I think you can see that. They will continue to bubble for a while. All of these have sealed. They seal during the cool down process. It's just beautiful. I just think it's beautiful. It's not quite as beautiful once it has come back to room temperature because some of the fat congeals. There's not a lot of fat on there, but there are people who call it ugly chicken, but it's good chicken. It's yummy. So I'm gonna leave these undisturbed for 24 hours. And then tomorrow afternoon, I will take the rings off and clean them up, label them. Just make sure that there are no juices or anything on the outside of the jar. 
so I can put them away and know that everything is clean. And then I'll put a label on them that says chicken and it'll say July 2022. And then I'll put it up in the pantry and it'll be ready for whenever we need it. So that's it. Wait, let me see if I can bring you down and show you this. That was a good little canning session. We got quite a bit done. So four pints said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that it? Yes, that's eight half pints. So that was fantastic. And I'm glad you were here with me. Just a little bit more out of that 10 pound package that I'm gonna do when I can some beef in a little bit. But this is what I wanted to show you. So thank you so much for being here. I hope that you will like the video. I hope that you'll subscribe. I hope that you'll forward it to friends. And most importantly, I hope that you will try it. So it's, it's, it's worth it to me. You'll love having it on the, on the shelf in the pantry. So thanks so much for being here. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.